Welcome, uh, um, everybody. My name is uh, uh, Dimitris uh, Papa Dimitriou. I'm the um, uh, director of uh, uh, the uh, Manchester Jean Monnet Center of Excellence. Uh, for those of you who are not that familiar with uh, um, the operation of the uh, the center, uh, it brings together uh, research and uh, uh, teaching expertise from uh, uh, three big universities in the uh, northwest: the uh, University of Manchester. Uh, Manchester Metropolitan University and uh, uh, the University of Chester. Uh, the centre runs a, um, a number of uh, high profile events as well as a, um, a regular uh, a fortnightly uh, seminar. And uh, the event uh, we are uh, um, hosting uh, today is the, uh, the last special event of uh, the year. And uh, we do have indeed a very special uh, a speaker for you. Uh, uh, Kalopi uh, Stefanaki is a uh, senior uh, protection uh, officer at the uh, uh, UNHCR uh, Greece uh, and the head of its uh, protection uh, unit. Uh, Kalopi is a um, uh, lawyer by training. She has uh, studied law um, both in Greece and uh, uh, in France and uh, she has been uh, um, uh, with the UNHCR for a number of years. Previously, she, uh, um, uh, she was employed at the uh, uh, Greek Obdusman's office. And uh, before that, she has served uh, uh, in the uh, European Parliament's office in, uh, um, uh, in Paris. Is someone, uh, uh, she's an, uh, an international uh, uh, expert, uh, someone that uh, has been, uh, has dedicated a big part of your professional life to the protection of uh, human rights and uh, uh, the protection of uh, uh, vulnerable people uh, uh, seeking refuge in uh, um, Europe and in Greece now. Uh, she's here uh, um, by virtue of uh, her affiliation with the UNHCR. So I just wanted to um, uh, clarify that she's not uh, speaking on behalf of uh, uh, the Greek uh, uh, government. Uh, the UNHCR is independent of uh, uh, the Greek uh, government. And uh, as someone with a significant uh, practitioner's experience in this field, I think she will have uh, some fascinating insights for us. Uh, just before I give the floor to, uh, to Kalliope, um, uh, a few um, housekeeping rules that uh, um, we have agreed that Kalliope will speak for about half an hour. She will provide us a, um, um, an overview of uh, um, uh, the issue of uh, um, European uh, uh, refugee policy and its application in, uh, um, uh, in, in Greece. Uh, we do hope that uh, a lot of you will participate in the uh, Q&A after. Uh, if you want to submit a question, please uh, uh, use the, the Q&A function at the bottom of your uh, screen. Uh, you can type it there. I will then uh, take it and uh, uh, submit it to, uh, to Kayopi. And uh, um, uh, we do look forward to uh, um, hearing what we have to say and uh, to a lively discussion. The, the topic is certainly important and uh, often controversial, both in Greece and in Europe. So uh, there is a lot, uh, a, a lot to say. So, Kayopi, welcome to, uh, to Manchester, even virtually. We're delighted uh, uh, that uh, uh, you're with us and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dimitris. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to address uh, your audience and thank you for, uh, to those for, uh, their part who are participating. And uh, I hope that uh, we will have an interesting uh, afternoon session with a focus on Greece and the refugee protection in Greece. Allow me to uh, share directly my screen I will be using the PowerPoint uh, and uh, I hope that will facilitate the uh, uh, following up by everybody. Okay. Okay. Uh, dear all, uh, I will be uh, presenting today, I was asked to present today the, the refugee protection in Greece and how this is connected with the EU policies and to what extent what happens in Greece, this interesting corner uh, at the southeastern Europe, 
um, influences policies uh, at the EU level and vice versa. Uh, I will start by giving you some very basic elements determining the Greek context, so to know in what context our, uh, our uh, uh, discussion will, uh, will be centered. And I uh, decided to, to give you uh, four sets of rights to, to, to focus our discussion in four sets of rights, um, uh, which are linked to the refugee protection. These are the access to territory and to the asylum. A second uh, 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 rights group is the fair and efficient asylum procedures. A third one are the reception conditions and a favorable protection environment for the persons of concern to UNHCR and for the refugees. Uh, a fourth one is a durable solutions and integration. All In all these uh, uh, rights groups, um, uh, in, and in each one of them, uh, I will very qui uh, uh, quickly go through what is the principles uh, in the specific protection of this specific area of rights. Uh, what is what happens in Greece? What is the stay of play in Greece? And one, what are the one or two issues that need to be that need to be uh, 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 need to be uh, uh, kept uh, as issues to be discussed and resolved and decided upon um, uh, as we go along uh, in uh, as decision makers, as researcher, as as public opinion on these issues. So. The Greek context, some basic elements of the Greek context. Of course, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, needless to say that the, it is an EU member state at the external EU border, which determines to a very, very large extent the situation uh, uh, in Greece as regards migration and refugee management. To say that the route through uh, from Turkey uh, through Greece to Europe has been the main the main route and Greece has been the main gate to the EU until 2019. From all the Mediterranean routes, this, this route was the most uh, uh, populated one. Um, currently, there are approximately one, um, 115,000 asylum seekers and refugees uh, present in 2021 in the country. Uh, uh, um, this, this is the population that mostly remained following the emergency situation of 2015 and the, and the large influx that we had at that time. Uh, and those are those who are currently catered uh, by the Greek government and uh, its partners. Greece is the fourth, the fourth country in the EU until um, at, at least uh, um, uh, late 2020. It is the fourth country in the EU in new asylum applications. So uh, it is a country that receives a large number of asylum applications after France, Germany and Spain. It is a country which has the very, very uh, uh, specific particularity uh, to uh, be implemented in a readmission agreement between the EU and Turkey, uh, based on the EU-Turkey statement uh, uh, agreed um, at EU level with Turkey in March 2016. So this is a very special readmission agreement providing for the possibility to return asylum seekers uh, before uh, the end of the process of their asylum application on the basis of the assumption that Turkey is a safe third country uh, to receive back asylum seekers and end the process of uh, their asylum applications and identify their international protection needs. It is a country that is, is very, very slowly st stabilizing from a decade of severe financial crisis, not to forget this. It is a country that has a very robust uh, uh, EU and uh, EU agency support uh, financially in human resources, and the uh, uh, EU is very much present in Greece. Uh, Greece, Turkey as neighbors, uh, it is a, a well-known story. Uh, there, is, there is a tense political environment and whatever happens at this corner um, uh, is, is also uh, needs to take into consideration also this context. Uh, everybody knows, we believe, uh, 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 those who deal at least with refugee and migrants in, in Europe, Lesbos and Moria, the Moria Center. Uh, this is the island uh, that has become the spotlight of the public opinion in Europe and beyond. And it is considered to be the face of Europe as regards 
reception and, 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 uh, and hospitality by uh, Europe of migrants and refugees. Um, this is an island at the uh, northeastern border of uh, Greece with Turkey. Uh, we, have, we have had a government change in summer 2019, and we are having a more uh, restrictive and um, rather more control-oriented policies in the migration refugee management. Uh, the, the EU pact negotiations, the new package that uh, the, the European Commission has submitted for the, for the negotiation as regards the future of uh, the asylum and migration in Europe, uh, Greece is part of uh, uh, the MED5 coalition of, uh, uh, the, of uh, mm, the five countries in the Mediterranean, uh, along with Greece, Cyprus, Italy, Malta and Spain. They have formed the coalition and they have joined positions as regards the negotiation of the EU pact. And last but not least, the new multipurpose centre to be created for the reception of refugees and migrants uh, on the Lesbos Islands. Uh, the one that it will be replacing Moria. Moria was uh, on a fire uh, in last September and there is no Moria anymore. And hopefully there won't be any Morias anymore. Um, uh, this multipurpose center uh, under creation, under establishment, will be the pilot for the new reception and asylum border procedures in the EU. So yet again, one another, another reason for Greece being in the spotlight as regards the EU uh, developments. So access to territory and the asylum, basic principles in this context, uh, the non reform principle, all uh, in need of international prote protection must have access to register their asylum application. They all must have access to decent living conditions, information to their rights, having their specific needs identified, including unaccompanied minors, and uh, their needs addressed appropriately. And uh, last, uh, security and health considerations are not incompatible with protection-sensitive border management. Let's not forget this uh, when we are uh, called uh, in uh, um, advising in policies, in formulating policies. Uh, they are often con considered uh, contradictory, but they are not. There are ways uh, to accommodate all concerns of the state and at the same time protecting the refugees according to our international obligation. So in this, in the first rights group of access to the territory, uh, what happens in Greece? First of all, we have a sharp decrease in arrivals in 2020. The COVID-19 has been one major factor for this decrease, but also some uh, more, uh, more um, uh, practices that are very much uh, linked to pushback practices and to deterrence uh, practices at the borders, sea and land borders. As UNHCR, we have recorded uh, in 2020 and up to now in 2021, 300 pushback incidents. And these are incidents that we uh, have uh, assessed uh, to a large extent their credibility and that we have triangulated. We, have, uh, we are requesting for investigation and we expect to see investigations uh, initiated by the Greek government. However, we don't have any information about investigation. It is important also to say that in Greece, in, that March 2020 has been marked uh, in Greece uh, with uh, very, very um, uh, um, agitated environment at the Turkish Greek uh, land borders, where uh, there were a lot, a lot uh, of migrant refugees um, aiming at irregular crossings gathered at the uh, at the borders, and it is at that moment that uh, the, the the European Commission uh, named Greece as a shield of Europe, uh, as Greece managed to uh, to to guard the borders against these movements. Um, however, at the same time, uh, in our country, unfortunately, from, from the perspective of, of UNHCR, um, it was the country uh, that for the first time uh, suspended the registration of asylum applications, um, with uh, uh, denying the right to those who have entered in March 2020 to register as asylum applicants. Of course, they were not returned to uh, anywhere. 
uh, they just uh, uh, remained on hold uh, until finally after March and after the lift of this measure, uh, their asylum uh, applications are registered. However, we are very cautious about this uh, practice creating any precedent about, about the suspension of the application of the Geneva Convention in, the, in practice. So the issues that we have that arise from, from in, the, in this rights group uh, for, for us is, uh, can consideration of the states of a refugee or non-refugee profiles of, uh, the, of, the, of those coming in, uh, uh, could, they, could they affect our international obligation uh, to protect refugees and to allow us uh, and to allow access to procedure and protection? Uh, if a state, if a government believes that those who are about to cross are not of a refugee profile, or um, uh, do, do, does international law allow for the prevention of entry? And the answer from our side is no, because, the, the, because access to protection is a right for everyone. And it is the responsibility and the obligation of the receiving state to find the way, the, the accelerated procedures, uh, whatever way, to assess uh, the claims individually and get a quick and fair decision on these claims. Another mm -hmm. issue in this area of uh, rights, as, um, access to, to territory and access to asylum is what, what is proposed by the EU. Yes, sorry. Is there? Everything okay? Okay, okay. What is what is the what is uh, uh, what is in the new EU pact? We have the proposal of having a fiction of non-entry, meaning having a stage uh, within the territory of the EU member state at the external border, where uh, there is no there is not yet a legal entry um, um, conduct, um, completed in the country. So this is something that, uh, uh, first of all, the MED5 states, including Greece, um, are, are against, uh, uh, as well as UNHCR, because this will create issues of uh, what, what legal framework, what law is applied in, in, this, in these zones. Uh, and uh, uh, it, will more, it will further complicate rather than facilitate uh, the, the fast processing of those of the newcomers. And the, and the third very important issue and, and very, very pre and prevailing, which is prevailing in the discussions as we speak, is the, the ask uh, for the independent, for the creation of an independent national monitoring mechanism. The Greek government has already taken position in favor of the creation and the establishment of such a mechanism. It might not be a new one, it might be a new competency that can be added to existing, uh, to already existing human rights, independent human rights institution, like, for example, the Greek Ombudsman. Now, the second set of rights has to do with the fairness and the quality of the asylum procedures. And there and here we have some very basic principles. First of all, an individualized assessment of each application of international protection procedural safeguards, uh, the safe third country concept to be applied in accordance with international and EU law, those who are found not to be in, international, uh, in need of international protection to be returned with dignity and with respect of their human rights, and that seriously vulnerable asylum seekers should in principle be exempted from the highly accelerated procedures. These are the basic principles the, the observance of which we are looking at. What happens now in Greece? Uh, first of all, we have to note uh, and commend the progress that the state has, uh, has uh, noted in the last year with the clearing of the backlogs in uh, asylum registration and decisions uh, issuance in 2020. Um, uh, COVID-19 has helped uh, because there was a suspension of all other administrative actions, uh, no um, interviews, um, presence, etc. So there has been the, so this has given the possibility to clear the backlog, the backlogs. The ASO support, this is a very, very important element for the Greek context. Uh, and it is a very, very important su support for the over overburdened asylum system, just to note that currently ASO staff 
uh, deployed staff in the Greek asylum system is approximately one third of the totality of the um, of the of the asylum capacity. So we have two thirds uh, employees of the asylum services in Greece, and one third uh, it is ASO staff. Um, uh, uh, speedy the the, the speed the, the the concern for speedy procedures and the aim of, of speedy procedures. Uh, unfortunately, uh, prevails over quality adjudication. So we see gradually a, kind, um, a type of de deterioration of the quality of the adjudication. And UNHCR is uh, implementing a program in agreement and in cooperation with the Greek authorities to preserve these quality features of the procedure. The other issue that worries us is that we have blanket admissib inadmissibility decision for application of the third country concept vis-a-vis -vis returns to Turkey. According to the principle, everyone will have to have an individualized assessment. Uh, because the Turkey, Turkey is considered a safe third country for Syrians, uh, the, the, the Syrians go through an admissibility procedure where they are examined if they return to, to Syria for every individual, every asylum seeker, uh, sorry, they return to Turkey, sorry, uh, is uh, if Turkey is a safe third country for every Syrian. And so in this adjudication, we see that there is no, no, no examination of an individual uh, circumstances of each case. And we have a black, blanket inadmissibility decision. So a blanket um, uh, rejected inadmissible Syrians ready to be returned to, to Turkey under the EU Turkey statement. Uh, the, the problem with this is that because the, uh, the returns have been suspended, we don't have returns to Turkey. Uh, and therefore, we have um, a significant population on the Greek islands, uh, not possible to be returned, being in limbo with inadmissibility decisions. So they have no access to assistance. They are not in the asylum system. They are out of the process. And there is really a concern about these people too. Now, what are the issues here um, in, in a vis a vis this, uh, this uh, state of play? Uh, first of all, does quality compromise efficiency? We hear very often that with all preserving all the quality features of the procedures, we won't have efficiency. This is wrong. There are again ways to have fast but also fair asylum procedures. The second issue here is how gradually um, um, uh, um, staff, personnel, uh, not under the jurisdiction and the control of the public administration are um, part of this administration and are issuing uh, acts and are influencing uh, the, 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 the administrative, um, the, the administrative uh, function. And, and, and uh, like, for, like, for example, the, 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 the ASO personnel and the ASO deployments, it is creating an issue and it does raise questions, um, constitutional and legal, one, uh, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the national legal order. Um, and of course, uh, returns, supporting returns uh, for UNHCR is very, very important because, because returns, effective returns of those who are not in need of international protection and who are rejected is part, a very integral part, an important part of the integrity of asylum system and the credibility of asylum system. If we are to see who is a refugee and who is not a refugee, and we cannot return the person who is not a refugee, then uh, adjudicating and, and, and seeing who is a refugee and who is not loses really the, 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 the meaning. But when systems, asylum systems are flawed, when we have persons going through procedures where we don't trust and we don't believe that they have the necessary safeguards, then how to support returns, how to be in favor of their returns, so this is another dilemma in this area. And I'm going to the third set of, uh, of, 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 of rights and issues, which are the reception conditions and the favorable protection environments. First of all, here we have in the principle, we need a living conditions that are decent for all. There are minimum requirements in the EU law, obligations under EU law about uh, the reception condition of asylum seekers. Um, we have special arrangements for persons with specific needs, including unaccompanied minors. The detention uh, is to be used only as a last resort. 
while alternative to detention should be exhausted before uh, detention is uh, imposed as a measure. The hate speech and racism, of course, should be eliminated. And uh, another basic principle is that refugees should be part of the decision-making process that concerns them. So an effort for community mobilization and empowerment of the communities. Uh, what is the situation in Greece? Uh, we have a very significant progress. Uh, this country started with 1,400 reception places in 2015, and, um, in and in 2021, it has approximately 60,000 uh, reception places. So, um, so it can host uh, um, uh, with, uh, with, with um, certain adequacy um, far more uh, bigger numbers than it, 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 it could uh, six years ago. Um, that we have improved some slightly improved reception conditions on the islands in the last year due to the decongestion of the islands. Um, we have the geographical restriction of movement applied on the Greek islands because of the application of the EU Turkey statement. Um, uh, the, we, we lack, there is a lack uh, in this country of a long-term reception strategy, we, which should need to be coupled by a, a contingency plan. So um, plan for a reception capacity, but if an emergency occurs, again, to be ready to address the needs of this emergency. Um, we have issues with access to education of children, uh, we have uh, an arbitrary application of detention, as we said, it, it is for the last resort, as a last resort, and it needs an individual assessment, and we have concerns that per persons are detained without this individual assessment. And for, uh, last but not least, the public narrative is very much reinforcing the perception of a refugee as a threat. The migration and refugee movement is seen more as a problem and not as a phenomenon. And this is something that doesn't really help uh, the mobilization of the host communities to, to receive and to integrate uh, those that are to stay uh, with us. Um, now, the issues here, uh, the, uh, the issues here that we need to think about and, and reflect on um, um, is that the, the, the very, very, um, um, uh, a reality um, which, um, uh, which is the following that we are, the, the, the country is going to receive, um, to receive less funding from the EU. And uh, the EU funding has been, has been the, 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 to a very large extent, uh, the, 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 the funding that um, uh, all uh, migration and, ref and asylum refugee management wa was dependent on uh, since the emergency and on and onwards. Uh, so will we, will we experience and we think we will experience a deterioration of services and reception condition and services uh, because of this reduction of funding and because of the and also because of the handover uh, by international organizations uh, who were managing this who, who were operational in this area in cooperation with the state so far uh, will the state manage and uh, they, they manage how um, now uh, the other issue has to do with the reception conditions on the islands these multi-purpose centers that we uh, we do wait about these centers. Um, uh, when will they, they be ready? What will be the procedures up, applied there? And uh, we will see the model of the pact in EU pact as regards the procedure tested there. So um, a question mark, and we will be supporting as UNHCR uh, with presence on the islands uh, towards a direction that will be. Uh, in accordance with uh, with uh, better conditions and better uh, border asylum procedures. Um, how efficient and cost effective are detention measures compared to alternatives to detention? This is this is something that the state needs to reflect more um, upon, because really uh, the, 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 the development of thinking around alternatives to detention could be really be not only in favor of people's rights, 
uh, an asylum seeker's rights, but also uh, more convenient for the state. And I'm coming to the to the last part of of, of uh, to the last rights group that has to do with uh, durable solutions and in integration. Uh, for UNHCR in Europe, this is uh, their priority, uh, and 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 we and we do believe that uh, unless there is work on integration in each country, uh, there there won't really be a, a progress in 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 the way our societies see refugees um, uh, in them. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, as we, um, in, at, 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 the, at the level of the principles, um, um, uh, beneficiaries of international protection, so recognized refugees and beneficiaries of subsidiary protection, according to the EU law, are entitled to uh, have access to means to cover their basic needs. Uh, the beneficiaries of international protection are entitled to access to employment and social benefits. Family reunification is a right for recognized refugees. They have the right to, to, to bring their family under some conditions, but they have this right. Um, solidarity and responsibility sharing with, with, within the EU is a, is a fundamental principle. Um, uh, integration and durable solutions are a precondition for peaceful coexistence and social cohesion. And uh, last but not least, complementary pathways for people to move should be reinforced in order to reduce risky irregular movements. It is far, it is far better for the states to control the movements towards their countries instead of leaving it uh, to, 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 uh, to irregular movements that have all the risk for the persons themselves and uh, management issues and, and, and raise management uh, problems for the, for the hosting uh, states for the receiving states now in integration for integration in in greece uh very little really very little uh first of all after recognition there is no support to cover basic needs so an asylum seeker in greece is a more uh, favored than a, a recognized refugee um, obstacles in legislation and in practice hinder access to services, benefits and self-reliance. Even if a right is guaranteed in the legislation, there are so many practical uh, obstacles uh, starting from, from um, uh, documentation required by refugees that they can never have and ending to civil servants that they don't uh, really know what is a refugee or lack of interpretation of interpreters in order to have facilitation of this person's accessing the services, you have a legal provision that remains without any, any, any it, it, it is, remains without meaning because it cannot be implemented. Uh, national strategy for integration exists, but not matched with funding yet. So we fear that unless there is a funding component in this strategy and a plan, um uh we 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 yes we fear and we want to see uh, uh this coupled with funding so as to have a, a real plan uh, and a real action uh, and implementation plan and um, the integration uh, uh part uh, the integration area requires a, a, a very very strong interministerial co coordination uh, because it uh, derives from the competency of different ministries, uh, the measures that need to be taken in order to reinforce integration. And the interministerial coordination in this country, in Greece, is, uh, is weak. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, the, 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 what, is, what is of concern is the refugees' feeling of powerlessness. Uh, um, because this is a cause of dependency and mental distress. And uh, this is something that we need to fight through empowerment of the communities. Um, otherwise, they are not, they will, they will never be ready to become self-reliant and compromising in that manner and in that way their, their integration. So the issues here that we should retain in this area, in my view, is that uh, will Greece ever become uh, a country to integrate to? and not only be a transit country? 
um, they, they, we know very well why Greece is a transit country, but will it manage to be for some of, uh, of the refugees and, in, and, into, and a country to integrate to? Um, uh, is more in EU investment needed to promote integration in Greece? We have seen EU investing a lot in border control and in reception conditions, etc. But uh, not yet on integration. And and uh, should there be a, a bigger investment, uh, even in the uh, countries at the external borders, to integration? If uh, we really want to see people staying where they arrive and and uh, and uh, tackle secondary movements, control secondary movements. Um, uh, does the ask for relocation and responsibility sharing compromise the integration efforts? We are saying in Greece, and we are, uh, UNHCR is among the actors who are, uh, who, who are supporting the ask for a, a, a predictable relocation system uh, for uh, refugees, asylum seekers arriving in the in the countries uh, in, uh, at the external border of the EU, uh, in the frontline countries, and we do believe that this is needed in 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 uh, in periods where uh, mass influxes take place and where uh, the frontline countries are, are very overburdened. And um, uh, we need relocation, but uh, shouldn't there we balance this ask for relocation with the efforts that we are making for? having Greece being, um, in addition, an integration country. So this is it. And I will finish with some, um, with some quotes from our, uh, from our um, uh, High Commissioner that I think uh, take us a little bit away of our context, uh, the Greek context, and, and apply globally. Uh, and this is why uh, it has been used and it has been, been said by the High Commissioner on occasions where he was positioning himself globally. Um, so, and to show that we don't have really only a Greek issue or an EU issue to tackle, but we have a global issue to tackle. Uh, and this is why the Global Compact for Refugees and uh, its implementation is is gaining and 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 this is is an effort that we all need to we all need to 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 invest on because it has to do with cooperation and responsibility sharing among all states gro uh, globally the high commissioner said we need a responsibility sharing not a responsibility shift and uh, in his speech at the UN at the, the Security Council in 2019, he said that in the three and a half decades as an international civil servant, I have never seen such toxicity, such poison in the language, uh, politics, in media, in social media, even in everyday discussions and conversations around this issue. Toxicity that focuses sadly, tragically, often on refugees and migrants, on foreigners. That should be of concern to us all. And I'm adding, we have all of us to do something about it from, um, from um, where we are, each one of us. Thank you so much for your attention. And I'm here with you for, uh, for the discussion. Aliopi, thank you uh, ever, ever so much. You can stop sharing your screen now if you want. And, uh, um... Thank you for giving us uh, uh, such a uh, fantastically comprehensive uh, uh, account of all of the various issues that constitute uh, uh, the broader asylum and uh, uh, immigration problem, in a way, uh, in Greece and in, in the EU. If you don't mind, I'll, I'd like to uh, start with a, a couple of questions myself uh, that uh, look a little bit on the bigger picture. And uh, I would like to hear your opinion on the um, fundamental design of the EU's uh, common asylum policy, which requires every asylum case to be heard in the uh, country that uh, a refugee first uh, access. That, of course, puts, we know, um, uh, almost the entirety 
of the uh, effort to um, uh, uh, hear the various uh, uh, asylum uh, um, uh, cases in peripheral countries in the EU, uh, in the Mediterranean, but also in, in some of the Balkan countries. Is that a good design? Uh, I, I often wonder, well, I, I wonder about many things really, really on uh, uh, European asylum policy, but is that sensible? Uh, and again, looking back uh, uh, in, in periods of acute crisis, like in uh, uh, 2015, could it have ever worked that uh, Greece uh, 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 would hear uh, the asylum cases of one million people? Uh, um, uh, if the, uh, the Dublin Convention, uh, the, the Dublin regulation was to be uh, uh, followed and, and not suspended back then. Is this perhaps better that the, these asylum cases somehow are heard across the EU, uh, not only by uh, the country of uh, first access? And the uh, corresponding uh, question here, do you think um, if you were to design the, uh, the process from uh, the beginning, and I know that you have very different sensitivities to these things, but uh, would you um, uh, um, perhaps do the same? Would you try and create reception centers in, the, uh, in small islands in the Aegean? Or are we better off somehow dispersing uh, these people across the EU as they wait for their asylum to be heard? Thank you, Dimitris. You want me to answer directly? Yes, yes? please. Yes, yes please. okay, okay. I mean, to answer, to give you my opinion, it's not, uh, there is no <laughs> straightforward answers in this because you are exactly putting the, the, putting the, um, the focus on a very, very important issue, which has to do uh, with the individual examination of each application and the uh, compared uh, uh, to uh, mass influxes and the, 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 and, and, the, and the burden and the strain that uh, comes with it. Um, uh, there are, uh, for, for, yes, let me put it that way. Um, um, uh, the, there are different, uh, different designs that could assist, help uh, the uh, fast, processing, uh, triaging, let me put triaging, not processing, triaging of, uh, of uh, people of irregular uh, arriving individuals. Let me put it that way. Uh, there are a lot of proposals um, and, uh, the, the all, and, and, and the issue here is that uh, uh, what is important is to have them to have them in, in, a, in a design where they will have their uh, cases heard. This means, this means that you will have the, these people under the jurisdiction of a state, of more states than only the frontline states, and there you can have multiple scenarios and designs how to manage. You have, uh, you can have accelerated procedures, uh, triaging the cases in manifestly unfounded or well-founded cases where you can accelerate very much the process. You can couple, you can couple, you, then you have the most, the more complicated cases that you can, uh, you can uh, have a quota of distribution um, uh, around the EU, so relocation of the most difficult cases. Um, uh, you you can have in mass influxes. There has been there has been also used in in uh, in uh, certain contexts the prima facie status. The prima facie status gives some rights, very very pre preliminary ones, so as to give uh, the the time and the space to have the individual assessment. The, the, issue here, the, the, the issue here is that you have to have responsibility, control um, over, the, the, over those who are arriving in your territory, in a, in a state's territory, and who apply for asylum. So this is what needs to be secured, that, that, uh, that, you, that you have 
under your, your jurisdiction, uh, people to manage. And then how to manage, uh, how to triage, and how to, to, to distribute probably this these uh, persons, it remains to be to be agreed. The, the problem is, first of all, not to leave them outside the EU and not being under the, the competency of the state, of an EU state under the law, un, under the legal framework of, of EU, so outside the EU territory, the extraterritorial, the proposal for extraterritorial processing, with which we are fully uh, against, because exactly the, the EU uh, we, we, we fully against for for two basic reasons. First of all, EU is responsible to to protect refugees when 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 refugees uh, uh, demand the protection of Europe, and second, we just. Uh, 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 drop the problem to uh, another one's yard. So, so just, uh, uh, globally, is something that we, we won't lead us anywhere. Am I right to um, uh, uh, interpret your um, your argument here as an implicit concern that somehow, de facto, since uh, 2016, the EU has uh, outsourced some of these legal responsibility to protect to Turkey, a country that uh, itself is not a beacon of human rights for its own citizens. Yes, there is in the in the EU law, uh, it exists uh, the safe third country concept, meaning that when, uh, as, when, uh, when a country uh, through which the asylum seeker has transited can be considered uh, under some criteria a safe third country. So uh, this is totally different from um, if you want an extraterritorial processing. Right. Okay. okay. It is okay. totally different. Why? Why it is different? Exactly because the application of the safe third country concept under EU law goes through the same, the very same requirement of individual assessment. You have a Syrian arriving on Lesbos, applying for asylum. This. You, and you and and the state Greece has considered um, Turkey to be a safe third country for Syrians, uh, asylum seekers. Fine. Before returning to uh, Turkey as a safe third country, there needs to be an individual assessment of the person if Turkey is indeed a safe third country for that particular profile of asylum seeker. So you have their safeguards uh, in the context of the application of the safe third country. Um, y y there are safeguards, which is totally different from having extraterritorial processing. So yeah, so my 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 reply to your question um, um, is is a shift of responsibility to Turkey to examine the asylum applications. But this is something that this is something that it is allowed under the very very specific uh, conditions preconditions of the of the of the law that's very clear um can i just uh, uh, um, um, ask you to provide us some uh, uh, broad figures here so that we can understand a little bit better the extent of the uh, the problem i mean we have heard many times that uh, um uh, uh, even though uh, uh, the european union in particular has committed huge amounts of money uh, to uh, to greece to support for uh, uh, the accommodation and the uh, asylum processing of uh, uh, um, um, uh, applications. Um, uh, the Greek government has somehow wasted a lot of that money, that in other words, the EU does not see a good return for the money it has uh, uh, channeled to Greece if one looks at the conditions in various camps and so on. Can you confirm with us, uh, uh, to, to us, how much money has Greece received from the EU to support this operation in the last, I don't know, five years, perhaps. Yes, Dimitris, uh, uh, I'm sorry for this, but I can have it in a moment. Uh, oh, we have the... still, yes, I will get it that, I will get that uh, a general figure, uh, but um, there has been a considerable amount of funding coming in. Uh, at the same time, uh, there has been considerable pr progress made with that uh, uh, funding. And I was referring 
to the, to, the, to the increase of the reception places. This is not a, a, an increase, it's, a, it's really a boosting of the reception yes. places for, from 1,400 to 60,000 places. Um, so uh, there, there has been, there has been, uh, the, the, with the creation of all these centers, etc. Um, uh, there has been the cash assistance uh, and uh, the STIA program with the apartments. So still in the reception conditions area, um, uh, according to the EU law. Um, and um, there has also been a lot of progress with the investment of the ASO in the asylum procedures, the, the clearance of the backlogs, the, 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 the uh, faster um, examination and the faster processing on the islands, so that uh, uh, the islands are decongested and people are, uh, are transferred to mainland. Um, EASO, uh, supporting the asylum service, has played a very, very uh, crucial role here. So with that support by the EU, there has been progress. The, 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 um, the, the issue is that uh, what has been unfortunately a cross-cutting feature of the administrative management in this country, which is not uh, only um, uh, would, does, not, does not affect the migration refugee management area, it affects, uh, as you very well must know, the whole administration, fun the functioning of the administration yeah. in Greece, uh, lack of culture of planning, um, uh, lack of, of, uh, of, um, of robust uh, mechanisms of monitoring and uh, impact monitoring of the plans and of our actions and of our accountability. All these have been noted also in the area of migration and, and asylum. If you want, in a, in a, in, to their, to their uh, bigger extent, uh, to their larger extent, exactly because it is an area where there was no institutions, there was no structures before. And but the fact, I guess, uh, still remains, if, if if I got your figure right, that uh, um, there are 60,000 places to accommodate uh, uh, asylum seekers, but uh, right now there are uh, over 115,000 refugees there. So still um, half of all refugees, uh, um, or, or we have twice as many refugees in the country, following a substantial uh, um, decline in numbers coming into Greece, then we have places. So yes. that is a bit of a worry in terms of uh, um, uh, if the situation worsens, then I guess we are back to very, yes. very difficult territory. Huh? Yes, uh, approximately 25,000 out of the 115,000 are urban population. So they are not in uh, reception places, right. okay? okay? They are receiving cash and they are uh, they are receiving uh, the assistance in uh, in cash not right. in kind so you have uh, yes among this uh, population you, you you don't necessarily we don't necessarily need for the whole population reception centers, reception centers. yes I understand. Uh, although there is there is a direction in the current uh, policy um, uh, to have most of the um, asylum seekers in the country staying in um, state-run facilities right. uh, and not being uh, being urban, being um, assisting in cash in the urban. Let me encourage the audience to continue to send in uh, 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 questions. In the meantime, um, uh, you uh, uh, you talked about pushbacks, and that's something that uh, has also uh, featured in uh, um, a, a number of international news outlets in the last uh, uh, a few a few months. Uh, I'm not sure, I mean, you said that there have been about 300 confirmed incidents. I don't know how many people in the audience know what exactly that means. Uh, um, I think you made it clear in your, in your talk that uh, this is a practice uh, that is uh, considered illegal from the UNHCR. Uh, um, can you uh, perhaps describe to us uh, um, 
what happens in this case? How does it work? Because I think it's important for people to be uh, aware of the mechanics of it. Yes, Dimitri, yes. So, uh, yes, we, we uh, call pushback uh, with, with the general title of, push, of pushback uh, different uh, actions taking place um, and uh, taking place in Greece. And uh, the outcome of which is an informal, um, out of formal and legal procedures return. This can happen at the borderline, meaning uh, between uh, Greek, 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 Turkish territorial waters at sea, at the Evros River, the borderline. Uh, and what happens there is that what happened is that we, uh, according to the reports and to the accounts, uh, persons have crossed the borderline, have entered into uh, land or Greek territorial waters, and they have been uh, driven uh, by uh, Greek Coast Guard or Greek authorities, police authorities, border guards, uh, or, or again in the borderline, um, pushed back to the other side. That is so one. effectively, it will be an inflatable boat full of uh, uh, um, uh, refugees being uh, forcefully pushed away by exactly. a motorboat of the coast exactly. guard. Exactly. Another, another pattern uh, that we include, uh, that we see in the incidents and we include them in, are informal returns from persons who have arrived on an island or arrested in mainland and summarily taken back to the borders and being returned. Right. Uh, yeah. And this is something that really worries us uh, a lot because uh, it uh, uh, entails um, um, risks, high risks um, uh, for, for the people, both those at the border lines uh, and also those that are, have been, that are being taken from mainland or from, from the island uh, back to the sea. Um, imagine uh, groups of refugees having arrived on the island of Lesbos, having approached uh, the center, a quarantine center for COVID, where refugees uh, go through new arrivals, uh, go through a quarantine. Um, uh, they have been given food and given clothes by, by, their, uh, by, by their compatriots there, and they were uh, the, the, and and and, and uh, then authorities, um, uniformed or non-uniformed persons, came, took them away, put them, to, took them away from from the center, um, not registered, of course. There is no registration of these people officially, formally, nowhere. They were taken back to uh, to the sea, to life rafts, and then abandoned in the sea. This is a case that we are looking at very closely um, uh, this, uh, this, this period and that we always put in the, to the knowledge of the authorities, all the accounts that we receive requesting for investigation. It is not for us to investigate. It is not for you and each other to investigate. For us, our responsibility, if you, if you want, is to, 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 to have a first assessment of credibility of what we receive, triangulation, to the extent possible, we are not just transmitting what uh, we receive as uh, information yeah. and alerts. We are just trying to triangulate the fa the, some facts. We have direct accounts from the persons affected by these pushbacks because they have been pushed back and then managed to get in. So we have, so we have testimonies, uh, particularly as regards the land borders. We have testimonies, and that these are these are really practices that are. Um, highly, highly, highly concerning, particularly those that are uh, in, in the territory. We have asylum seekers, we have one refugee being returned informally. Yeah. So That's very clear. I, I, I continue to get uh, uh, questions in. Just uh, um, uh, um, let me uh, put a, um, a, another uh, couple of uh, sh short questions. 
Um, can you give us uh, some insight into the percentage of asylum applications that uh, are approved in Greece? I mean, we know that the, within the EU, the, um, the rate of acceptance of asylum applications uh, varies quite uh, substantially. Um, we don't need exact numbers. All we want you to tell us is, is Greece one of the worst performers? Because there is one thing to say that the people uh, are, um, are able to uh, submit an asylum application according to the law. It's a very different, of course, uh, issue uh, when uh, uh, um, uh, the courts uh, um, uh, consistently and overwhelmingly reject this application. So that's one question. Uh, so how, um, uh, how generous, for a better word, is the, the judicial treatment of asylum uh, uh, um, uh, applications in Greece. Uh, secondly, um, there was a, um, a big, uh, um, uh, a widely publicized drive by the Greek government to um, uh, somehow um, um, move unaccompanied minors from uh, uh, reception centers. There are thousands uh, 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 of uh, these people, minors without parents who were, uh, sort of uh, um, waiting in reception centers uh, um, uh, under very difficult conditions one would imagine. Uh, the, um, the ambition of the Greek government was to um, reduce that number substantially. Uh, has there been enough progress on this front? Thank you, Dimitris. First of all, on the recognition rate. In 2020, the recognition rate in Greece was 42%. So 42% of the asylum applicants have been recognized as refugees or as beneficiaries of subsidiary protection. That's quite generous, I think, no? It is, it is, it is fine. It is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, EU, the, the at the EU level, the recognition rate was approximately 37 or 38%. Okay, that's fine. So, so uh, we, 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 we are, we are fine compared to, 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 to the average or, uh, or yes, um, uh, to the average uh, EU um, and, um, and as regards, uh, yes, the recognition rate. Uh, now, of course, there are differentiations between the states on specific nationalities. There are nationalities where discrepancies are high. There are nationalities that, where the discrepancies are lower. Huh? But uh, yes, that, that was our recognition rate, it was 42%. Um, um, uh, on, on the question uh, of, for the minors, for the unaccompanied minors, um, there has been a big progress on that front in Greece. And uh, first of all, this progress has been in, in the, is institutional. Uh, for the first time in the last three years, there is a legislation on guardianship for the unaccompanied minors in Greece, and if you want, if you, if I may, if I may say, uh, the, 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 the emergency uh, was in the origin of this. For for me, in my view, and in the view of uh, of uh, many of us here, the emergency was not only was not only a, a, a very very. Um, um, uh, harmful uh, and, and difficult situation to manage. It has been an opportunity for this country because of the emergency, because of the emergency, Greece has a, a, a Ministry of Migration and Asylum. It has institutions dealing with asylum. And among this, very much so, uh, the institutions dealing with unaccompanied minors. So we have guardianship law, we have foster care law, we have uh, a special secretary for the unaccompanied minors as a position in the in the in the Ministry of Migration and Asylum, uh, dealing dealing comprehensively with the needs of unaccompanied children. We have reception centers for unaccompanied children. We have abolition of protection uh, of pr protective custody uh, by police for minors. This was allowed uh, because um, as long as uh, and until the minor could be uh, transferred referred to a shelter uh, and, and the, sometimes this period uh, might uh, this this 
time, um, time, the duration of the protective custody um, might have also exceeded uh, months uh, in, in, in uh, under police, in police stations, etc. So this has been abolished and there is now uh, um, in progress uh, a national mechanism for the tracing of uh, homeless children and uh, in precarious conditions uh, in order uh, as an alternative to protective custody. So this mechanism will identify children that have no, uh, are, that are out there, unaccompanied children, and instead of having police taking care of them, they would be uh, referred to uh, day, night, one night, two night shelters, and then until they are um, referred to more permanent uh, uh, accommodation uh, solution and care arrangement. So there has been progress. There has been really big progress on the, on the unaccompanied minors. That's great. I'll uh, right. put to you one final question, if I may, uh, Carlo. We don't want to impose on your time uh, uh, too much. It came it's through uh, the chat, this one. Uh, and it's an interesting one. It, it, it looks again at the broader picture, uh, not only Greece. And uh, uh, the question goes uh, something like this. To what extent has Europe been part of the, the EU has been part of the problem here or part of the solution when it comes to uh, managing uh, um, uh, um, asylum uh, uh, and, and, and asylum seekers and refugees and so on? Uh, I would say that it has it has been both. In what sense? It has been part of the solution because because of the support of the EU, financial uh, resources, human resources, um, and the, the the actions, of course, of the Greek authorities, uh, with the state being in the leadership of this um the, the the situation after 2015 in the country has been managed it couldn't have been managed without the support of the eu mm -hmm. uh, so in that sense it has been part of the solution on another in another aspect we could say that it, it continues to be a little bit part of the problem in what sense in the sense that um that 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 uh, the, the the prevailing approach, and it's not uh, it's not the EU, it's not it's EU members. We have to differentiate here: EU member states, European Commission, etc. Uh, we we tend to talk about EU. EU is not uh, a different dynamics in the European Commission proposing different dynamics in the European Council, different dynamics in the governments of the member state, but just uh, simplifying a little bit uh, um, the, 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 the answer, if I may, um, it, it, it is a part of the problem to the extent that uh, the, there, is, uh, the, there is no, um, uh, it is far more control oriented than it is needed. Uh, uh, being control oriented is not that it's not bad, uh, but it, it has to be coupled with uh, the, with the protection of rights, which in some cases would facilitate the processes, would make would make the management of the situation far more uh, far more um, um, uh, straightforward. For example, just to, to give you a very simple example, and uh, I will, will close the, the answer with this. Uh, 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 family, family reunification, family reunification of recognized refugees. From Greece, we have recognized refugees who are entitled, who fulfill the conditions to have and ask for their family to join them in Greece. Okay, so there we have, so we have, a, um, a two 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 level process. The asylum service uh, issues a decision approving the family reunification, and then when it comes to the MFA and the visa, uh, the visa uh, granting, there we have very restrictive, very very restrictive uh, uh, policies and quotas of those allowed. When it is proved that there is a family to be reunited with a refugee. Um, in Greece, why not to reinforce this complementary pathway to which 
there is a legal, uh, there is a, a legal right of the person and legal obligation of the state instead of leaving this family trying to cross irregularly um, the continent, two, three continents, and reaching Greece and to be reunited with the family. I'm just taking this as an example of uh, some irrationality that 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 policy makers, decision makers could have saved themselves off. Yeah. And, 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 and this could really make a difference in our view, because there are a lot of areas where they could have really um, think it a little bit otherwise. That's, uh, uh, that's very clear, and you're pointing to a very important uh, problem, of course. Uh, uh, let me take this uh, opportunity to uh, uh, thank the audience for uh, um, uh, joining us and for uh, submitting uh, questions. Uh, and of course, let me uh, thank Aliopi for uh, her input. I thought it was a, a, a great presentation and uh, very clear answers. I mean, I feel I, I'm Greek myself, and I, I still feel that uh, I don't know enough about this uh, this problem. I feel a lot uh, wiser uh, uh, after the past uh, uh, um, uh, hour and a quarter here. So, Aliopi, many thanks for uh, for coming to uh, uh, to speak to us. Uh, uh, just to um, inform everybody that uh, a recording of this uh, seminar will be uh, posted into our uh, YouTube channel shortly. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, let me uh, say uh, again to Kalyobi, many thanks and uh, continue to do your good work. Thank you very much, Dimitri. And thanks to all for uh, being with us this That's afternoon. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.